bridged both worlds. You arrived at Hulu last year after yes. <laughs> a, a long career in the traditional TV landscape. What's different? What have you learned? Well, what's surprising is what's not different. I mean, the things that excite me and keep me up at night are kind of the same things that kept me up and excited me when I worked at Fox or at Warner Brothers, which is it's just all about being in business with the best people. I mean, you, we, you need to be in business with Jill Soloway's. Your, your goal is to have a transparency, something that, that connects with the fabric of popular culture. So Jill, that's a show that a lot of people that I talked to, once they saw it, they said, that should have been on HBO, that should have been on AMC, that should have been on Showtime. How did it end up on Amazon? One was that Amazon was totally ready to take a risk. They were just ready to say yes. Did you have trepidations about going to Amazon? Yes, yeah, what before were anything had come out, yeah, so I just, I didn't know, but um, you know, I, I, when I speak to people now and you know, talk about what the next year of my life is like that I get to make season two and I have very, very little to no, to no artistic, you know, um, there's nobody stopping me from doing anything I wanna do. I can make exactly what I want and they give me notes, but they're very minor. And that gets into a conversation that we were having, Carrie, about how there is this explosion of content and this explosion of creators, and that Vimeo is kind of serving as a platform for more of the niche, um, more discrete areas of content. Can you talk about how that's emerging? The interesting thing about the web is I think we're also starting to see a world now where, where creators are really choosing that as their canvas and they're starting to choose that as their medium. Do you think that we are seeing more diverse perspectives? I think absolutely. I mean, even the stuff that we're looking at here, I mean, if the question is being made into television shows, I, mean, I think absolutely we have the, the evidence right here. Roger, how important was it for you all to include ESPN in your service? Look, if, if um if there's one channel that you could pick to have in a service like this, it would be the first channel I'd pick any day of the week would be ESPN. So for us, you know, we, we know that people like channels like AMC or ESPN, HBO, but they also like content like what is on Vimeo or what is on YouTube. And so what we're trying to do is create, you know, the best of live TV but also the best of what comes out of the web. I do think that places like Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, um, do have an advantage right now for, for content creators. Um, there, there is something about the idea of, you know, the no commercials, the binge, watching it all together, and the feeling that it is, it's, you know, I think I've met, I said to somebody once, like, the, um, when I used to work at network TV, it felt like everything I did had to, had to at some point go past somebody who had spent some time on a golf course. <laughs> like the, whoever was in charge of CBS, or like, those were guys and they had been on golf courses. Whereas like anything that's streaming, like you know that whoever the CEOs of those companies, like they've been to Burning Man. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'd rather my stuff have to like go past somebody who's been to Burning Man than like somebody who's been on the golf course all day, so. <laughs>